Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18.1 beta 4. iOS 18.1 beta 4 is available to developers and hopefully very soon to public beta testers. Typically they'll release this a day after or sometimes the same day by the time you're watching this video. Now prior to this update it was only available on the iPhone 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max and iPhone 16 devices. However now with beta 4 we can install it on any iOS 18 supported device. That means if you're a developer and soon public beta tester, you'll be able to install this on the iPhone SE second generation, all the way up to the 15 Pro Max or 16 series phones as well. Now this came in at 973.1 megabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro Max, and Apple also released a ton of other beta updates as well iPad OS 18.1 beta 4, watchOS 11.1 beta 1, as well as Mac OS 15.1 beta 4, tvOS and HomePod OS 18.1 beta 1, and Vision OS 2.1 beta 1. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 22B5045G. And this particular update does have some features and changes in it. And like I said, is available on older devices as well. The first new feature actually has to do with the control center. Many people will be happy about this. As we go into the connectivity part of the control center, they've actually updated it. So prior to this, it looked a little bit different. You can see here on the left is beta three on the right is beta four. They've made the icons much larger for cellular data, Bluetooth, airdrop, and Wi-Fi, and kept personal hotspot VPN and satellite the same size. So it's a small update, but something they've physically changed. Another thing you'll start to see, and this is also on iOS 18 as well. If you go to add controls here, we'll add a control. You'll start to see third party apps integrated into this, such as Instagram and others that have updated this with Halide and more. So they now have iOS 18 compliant apps that are available in the app store. So make sure you update your apps and you'll start to see new features here as well that go along with iOS 18. Now, something many people will be happy about is call recording is not part of Apple intelligence. Apple intelligence is only part of iPhone 15 pro max, 15 pro and iPhone 16 series, but on older phones, such as the iPhone 11, we still have call recording. And I can show you that if we go into our calls here and when you're in a call, even on an older device, you'll have a new icon in the upper left tap on it and you can now record the call. It will notify the person on the other line that you're actually recording the call and it will start recording it. Now you may not have the ability to actually have live transcription depending on the device you have. Typically you'll need an iPhone 12 and newer for that, but on the iPhone 11, I'm still recording the call. Then we can stop it. It will save it to notes. You'll see here at the top it's saved. If we go into the notes, we can play it back. So let me hang up the call here. You can go into your call and play it back. We just don't have live transcription. So if we go in, we can scrub through the message here, jump forward and continue to listen to it. So if you want to actually do that, you now have the option to record a call. And I know many people were concerned this would be part of Apple intelligence. Another thing they've added has to do with recording video. If we go into the camera, and this is even on old devices as well. So I'll show you here. If we go in and press record, we now have the option to pause the camera. So this is not only on the latest phones, but also on older phones as well. If it's supported in iOS 18.1 beta four, Apple has actually brought something back that some people may or may not like. If we go into the emoji keyboard, they've now brought back the large emoji icons again, that combine it with stickers and other options. So if we go through here, you can scroll through, maybe add some emoji. And once you do that, they'll continue to shrink just like before. If we go to stickers, we can then add them in line as well. And it works just like before, but we now have the larger keyboard where it's sort of just showing you everything here. And then of course you can add different things for stickers and more. So that's something they've updated with beta four. Let me know if you prefer this emoji keyboard or the older one, something else they've updated has to do with Apple intelligence with the new versions of Siri. If we go into type to Siri, bring up the keyboard. Then we start typing Apple. You'll start to see suggestions this time around. So Apple store, and you'll see maybe open Apple store app or Apple store Memoji badge shortcut. Or maybe if you type Mac, it will give suggestions for that. Maybe a note that actually contains that information, but again, it's updating in real time. And that carries across to Apple intelligence in photos. If we go into photos search is much faster this time around. And if we search for maybe cars 2022, you'll see it updates in real time, or maybe we could search for Las Vegas for CES. You'll see it updates in real time as well. It's just much faster than what it was before.
Another update has to do with wallpaper. If we go to add a wallpaper, we'll add one here. As we scroll down, you'll actually see options for iOS 18, but then below that in the collections, they've brought back the iPhone 15 pro wallpaper. So they've brought this back in iOS 18 as well, but they finally brought it to iOS 18.1. So if we cancel that, go back one thing they haven't updated yet, though, if we go into settings and then we go under display and brightness, they still haven't updated the icons in the appearance page. So that's something that needs to be done. I'm not sure why they haven't done this yet. Something else new worth talking about has to do with iPhone 16. And that's actually that firmware can now be restored wirelessly from another phone. It says restore nearby iPhone. So maybe you're on iOS 18 and you want to downgrade to iOS 17.7. We may be able to do it right from here. We don't know hundred percent as I'll have to test this out once I'm using the iPhone 16, but we'll have to try it out and see if it finally works that way. In addition to that, Apple actually updated a bunch of iWork apps. So that's something that has to do with iWork basically means pages and numbers and keynote. And if we go into those, they've got a brand new update. So you'll see they're right here. If we go into pages, we'll wait just a moment for it to load and you'll see it has a new splash screen. And in here we have start writing. It's just got a new sort of file browser. This is something Apple showed off a long time ago and they finally updated. So it's been updated with some new features as well as iOS 18 compatibility. And you'll see a new screen view where it says this new view makes it even easier to read and edit documents on iPhone by adjusting content to fit your screen. And then you can turn it off if you'd like. So some nice new updates with all three of those apps if you use those. One other thing I wanted to mention has to do with watchOS 11. For whatever reason, I forgot this in my video, but if we go into the watch app, give it just a moment, we do have a beta update there. I haven't updated yet. I'm still on watchOS 11, but if we go into here and then we go down to sounds and haptics, under sounds and haptics, we can now change the ringtone on the watch itself. And within ringtones, we can then select whatever we prefer on our Apple watch. So if I wanna play focus or maybe pebbles, whatever we want, we can select between these options now. So we finally can do that on the watch. I'm not sure why I forgot that with the watchOS 11 is out what's new video. There's one splash screen also worth mentioning. The first time I went into photos, it talked about the all new design, new collections, that it's fully customizable, and then search cleanup and create with Apple intelligence. I also got another splash screen and it seems like there's one every time I open Apple news, but I have a new splash screen for that as well. If we go to Safari on Apple's public facing website about the latest releases, go to the release notes. These have been updated some with some known issues as well as resolved issues such as the lock screen when on the lock screen, pulling down to invoke spotlight does not work. They've actually fixed that. There's known issues from upgrading mail from iOS 18 beta five to iOS 18.1, where it could cause it to redownload. And then Siri has known issues where Siri result snippets might appear in the wrong position. There's still some known issues with spotlight where icons and spotlight might not match on the home screen. So again, they continue to resolve issues for developers and more. And then of course we still have some known issues that remain. Now, as far as bugs that I'm experiencing, well, the new Siri animation sometimes reverts to the old one. When I was first testing this press and hold for Siri, we've got this nice new animation, but sometimes it would revert to the old Siri. In fact, to get this back, I actually had to reboot the phone. I had it on the iPad. It wouldn't work on the iPhone rebooted, and then it worked fine. Many are also seeing some issues in the control center where many of their icons are actually showing the shortcut icon for some reason. So I'm not seeing that maybe because I don't have shortcuts here, but it seems like it's taking over some of their icons. Also, Aaron P613 actually mentioned that he has the hearing icon here where it just won't go away. There's a separate page for it. And then in Twitter or X, you'll see on iOS 18.1 beta four, I can't seem to get rid of this in the control center. Neither can my friend. So the hearing icon is just sort of stuck there on its own page. Let me know if you're experiencing this in the comments below. Other than that though, the overall performance of the device is actually quite good on the 15 Pro Max. It seems to be much faster and we'll talk about benchmarks in a little bit, but not just scrolling, but the overall usage I noticed right away where things were much, much smoother. So if we go back home there, go into music, However, on older devices, such as the iPhone 11, I noticed using it right away, maybe it's processing quite a few things. It seems quite laggy. So you may have noticed that there. We'll go ahead and tap continue for the first time on 18.1. And it's a little bit laggy from time to time. Go into weather. Of course, it's going to take a moment to load, but sometimes just going through different things, it was definitely laggy.
However, on this device, when scrolling in the control center, again, this was much faster. So if we just scroll here, go back in, scroll up, it seems okay now, but sometimes this would lag really bad with beta three and it seems to be fixed. As far as the overall heat of the device, well, after installing an update showing Apple intelligence features, it's definitely a bit warm. So I'll give it a few days to process of course, and see how it is then. As far as battery life, well, hopefully this isn't any worse than iOS 18.1 beta three. That was pretty bad as far as battery life and within battery, you'll see battery health. I'm down to 90% with 306 cycles. And if we check out the last 10 days, you'll see, we have a new icon as well for update finishing in the background, telling us that it's having an impact on thermal performance and battery. But yesterday, three hours and 13 minutes was about all I got with over 100% usage, meaning I had to plug it in to get past that. So only about three hours of usage on this device with four hours of screen idle time. So hopefully it improves today. So far we're at three hours and 38 minutes and I'm at, well, I have 35% left. So it's really using the battery quite a bit. Hopefully it improves over the next few days. As far as if you should install iOS 18.1 beta four, well, if you're on beta three, definitely install it. However, if you're wondering about iOS 18, the public version, if you're on iOS 18 public, I would probably stay on that, especially if you don't have a 15 pro max or newer, as you won't benefit from the Apple intelligence features. I would probably wait for more stability or just to see how it is with battery life overall. One other thing worth noting is Apple has actually pulled iPad OS 18 for M4 iPad pro. It was apparently causing them to brick the device and they've since pulled it. Now they'll probably issue a re-release or we could see iOS 18.0.1. Last year, after the release of iOS 17, a few days later, we actually had iOS 17.0.1. So we could definitely see some sort of release with that. As far as the next iOS 18.1 version, well, I would expect it maybe sometime next week. So maybe on the 24th, that's what I would expect. Maybe on the 23rd, we don't have the exact date, but either way I would expect that. And of course this weekend will be very busy with the iPhone 16 launch. We'll have all of the iPhones, the Apple watches, AirPods, and more to talk about. So it should be very busy that day. Lots to talk about this weekend as well. Now, as far as the iOS 18.1 release date itself, well, probably sometime in October, maybe mid October. And then in December, we could see the following version. We're also expecting an Apple event in October as well to talk about Macs. When it comes to benchmarks, I ran them a couple times. So if we go into Geekbench 6, I also ran them on older devices here. And on the left is the iPhone 11. On the right is the 15 Pro Max. And we have 2,747 for single core, 6,741 for multi-core. I ran it a couple times as the first attempt was pretty poor and it's much better than it was before with beta three. So there's a definite improvement right after installing it, even though it's processing a lot in the background, iPhone 11 seems to be okay, but definitely not as good as earlier versions of iOS 17. So that's 17.4, which was definitely a few hundred higher than what we have today. The single core score though is pretty much the same. So that's pretty much everything with iOS 18.1 beta four so far. Of course, if we find more features, I'll talk about that in a separate video. And if you've found anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.